What's up, world? What's up, world? This your boy Jay Carter, and you know I'm on the black couch with Dream Shop Visual. Yeah. You don't gotta be afraid of love. You don't gotta All right, we got Jay Carter on the black couch with us today. How you feeling? What's up, man? I'm feeling pretty good, pretty good, man. How about yourself? For sure, I'm good. That's what's up. Hey, uh, let everybody know where you from. Hey, y'all, man, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, 216. You know what I mean? Uh, I grew up um, in uh, Garden Valley and stuff, though, and we moved to the west side. And really, I'm from all over, really. You know the story. Yeah. For sure. What was life like uh, growing up for you? Whew. Me, life was uh, really different. Uh, I grew up with my grandmother and stuff, though, because my parents was on drugs and stuff. Though. I'm just telling it like it is. And uh, I grew up with my mother, uh, grandmother, my mother, you know, um, and we was on the west side, so life was really different, you know what I mean? We was around a lot of white people, and and where I grew up, when we, I grew up back in the 80s, and so we was around the white people, and they was calling us niggas on the porch and shit, though. It was very different, though, for us and stuff. My grandmother took us out the hood because our family members was getting killed back to back and back in Garden Valley back in that time, so... You know what I mean? Heck your life. For but sure. a raw life, though, for sure. What uh, age did you get taken away from your parents, or was it at a very like young age where you don't remember? Uh, it, it was a young age. Uh, I got taken away at a baby, newborn. You know, sure. so, you know what I mean? That's why I said my grandmother and my mom, I know her. Right. But my birth mother, I love her too, because she's getting her life together now. Shout out to her for coming up now, you know? Sure. You uh, ain't got any contact with your father? Oh yeah, my father, he, he always been in and out of my life. Uh, but you know, he was a street nigga. He been in and out of jail and shit though, you know what I mean? But he's a great man, but he also was on drugs. And man, they did a number on our people though, for sure. But you know, he was in and out, in and out and shit though. You know what I mean? For sure, so uh, what age would you say things started changing for you? Filming growing up in the streets or whatnot. Um, well, growing up in the streets for so uh, I, I was a zombie in the streets, just like most of our black people, for real, for real. Um, was out there trying to find a way to get out of poverty and shit, though. You know what I mean? I knew it's something great for me. I'm just talented always. Um, I say at the age of uh, 16, 17, I started picking up music. Um, I'm a producer, uh, I write music, I direct music, uh, movies, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm an artist also, and uh, at the age of 21, uh, my grandparents died and stuff, so I had to get custody of my little brother, his name K.O., uh, and I had to get custody of him and stuff, and um, I started really changing my life, trying to really be a father figure to my little brother, but don't know how. So we still in the streets at trying to do whatever to get money and stuff though. And uh, at the age of 25, uh, I started really learning myself even more, traveling the world a little bit, you know what I mean? And um, started really making money, selling beats, learning how to mix my music down. And, and uh, my grandparents passed, my grandfather passed and stuff. And that was the most important people in my life. And I went in a deep hole forever, for real, for real. Like, I didn't want to do music or nothing because it's really, like, hard to live and shit, for real, for real, because I ain't know nothing. I ain't, the way I came up, they all I had, you know what I mean? So I was like I was a zombie. I had nobody to turn to, really, you know what I mean? I became a leader. I became everybody turning to me, and I don't know nothing. So I'm like, damn, what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do? But... You know what I mean? I'm still push, still pushing up. And I started gaining people with music, started getting younger people, you know what I mean? I started really turning into a boss and stuff, though, for real, for real. Start winning trophies and stuff with um, my young groups and stuff, though, really keeping them off the streets and stuff, you know, to start learning myself. Then I went to Vegas. I met Eddie Griffin. I met Eddie Griffin in Cleveland. I went to Vegas. He just got a $50 million uh, bonus or something 
for his uh, show on uh, HBO at the time. Went down there, so they was congratulating me, you know, with him and his little um, matching and shit, though. And he told me some real stuff about living life and stuff, and it stuck to me because I was lightweight living in the shit, though. But he told me a little secrets about life and shit, though. So I took that back, and then, bloom, my whole life changed and shit. Financially problem changed. My my depression problem changed and shit, though. You know what I mean? And, um, I, started, I started really really blossoming and shit though. Um, and then I figure out I'm by myself. And I'm like, damn, now I'm figuring out like the people I used to hang with, they, they all have like, poor mindsets and shit. I'm like, damn, these niggas ain't gonna never make it big or be in the mansions and shit or be on the yachts and shit or living the best life and shit though. Cause they really think about the street shit and the street shit ain't where it is at though, for real, for real. Cause it's a trap. The trap is really a trap, niggas. We gotta wake up out of that shit though because I ain't never seen nobody really say life's off that shit or or um, p teaching people how to grow and how to be successful to live life and get out of poverty for real. I don't see that shit though. It's a try. I see niggas dying and shit. I see niggas getting killed though for real, for real. You know what I mean? And and I'm starting learning this shit though. How to I, I meditate because meditation helped me control my emotions, which have helped me control my reality. You know what I mean? So I could really manifest anything if I keep my vibrations high. And I'm learning that shit though. So I got investors. I, I don't do shit. I would never work because I'm a boss and I know I'm a powerful being and money come to me. You know what I mean? So when money come to me, cause I'm a, I'm a God for real, for real. So I know we, 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 we supposed to have all the abundance. So it coming to me and shit, it's supposed to come to me. We don't supposed to be out here working and, and, and slaving and shit like the way we do, you know what I mean? But you know, my bad. I'm just talking this stuff. Uh, you good? I was, gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask you. Uh, so what's that uh tip, that life advice uh that stuck with you that Mr. Eddie Griffin gave you? What did he say to you that um, really? He was just uh really hitting on a spiritual tip about really um getting to the roots of where we came from, where we, we really gods and stuff, the way we thinking and stuff. You know, he been around the whole world and he learned some shit and, and the shit clicked with me. And I'm like, wow, this whole time I just been thinking different. He just been just telling me about the meditation and, uh, you know, the, the healthier way about eating and stuff. I don't eat meat and stuff. I started eating meat because I was finding out it was clogged, it's clogged the mind and stuff. A lot of people go with their own methods though, but for me, eating meat worked for me because it opened up my mind and shit though. I could really look around and think and, and, and be focused for the first time in my life and learn, you know what I mean? For the first time in my life and, and instead of being negative and just talking about people and, and always laughing and joking and putting people down, I went through that shit all in my 20s, you know what I mean? And, I, and I'm learning how to grow and save lives and shit though but eddie taught me how to how to be a king a god look at myself like a god keep my head up look at myself like i'm great because everybody else gonna see that shit though because if a stripper think like a stripper and stuff for real for real that's what everybody sees a stripper because she thinking that way that's that's the, that's in our head so everybody see that shit if a nigga thinking like a thug ass hard ass court nigga ah, ah, that's what everybody see but if you're thinking like a guy, a millionaire, a great person, everybody's going to see that. So that's what we got to learn and start thinking like a God and stuff, though, you know. For sure. For sure, for sure. Uh, what would you say the most traumatizing experience you had growing up in Cleveland? Whoo-wee. Just recently, man. Uh, the brother I was telling you about, K.O., he uh, got murdered. You know what I mean? Um... Uh, this is after all the Eddie, um, uh, Eddie Griffin stuff. Um, I'm on my high horse. I'm all over the world. You know what I mean? Um, I'm producing for the biggest people in the game, and, and we just living. We just living and stuff. And uh, my my brother got murdered and shit though. He got robbed. He got set up by a bitch and shit though for real. And and um. Like that shit hurt so far. I found the nigga body and shit though, shot up in the hotel and shit though. Um, and I remember I told you I got custody of him when he was younger, so it was more like a son to me too. Like this is my brother, like 
he a Carter like me. Like, we Carters and shit, though. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and and the, the, that shit just put me in another deep hole and shit, though. A hole, but only thing different this time, I was... I know myself, I know who I am and stuff though. It's, it hurt it so bad, like every day I just see his body laying on that floor. Laying on the floor and shit though. Um, and, and it was confusing, he died in Atlanta. And so I'm thinking at the time, I don't know what the fuck happened and shit though. I, like my brother was a flashy dude. Um, he liked to be on Instagram showing his money and stuff though. His name K.O. Carter, I mean, a lot of people know him, but um, that 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 really what got him taken out because some um, the case this, the case the the people that did is caught now, but um they's from Cleveland they followed him down to Atlanta and they whacked my brother for real for real and this shit hurt and it just made me want to give up on everything that's why I started coming out uh, with my music and shit though because the day he died and shit that earlier that day. He asked me, like, bro, why you stop doing music? I'm like, bro, I'm a producer, man. I, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm a producer, people. I, I, I do that shit behind the scenes and shit. He's like, no, bro, you made some cold shit. Your shit hard, bro. He's like, you should do that shit. I'm like, nah, nigga, I'm behind the scenes. Just talk. I ain't know, you know, I ain't no nigga gonna go. But, you know, I hear our last conversation so hard. And so I started back doing music and shit, though, um, because of that shit, though, for real, for real, right there. And that was tragic and shit, though. Uh, I got his kids, I took, you know what I mean? I began his kids and uh, I just had them last week. I went and bought them a pair of shoes and stuff with my sons and stuff. Uh, we all Carters and, you know what I mean? I'm trying to just be there for his kids and his families because my family is, toward, this is the first murder in our family. We've been around friends that got murdered, you know, we're from Cleveland. But just to have it happen in our bloodline and shit like that, trauma, man, it's, it, it still hurts so bad and we ain't gonna never get over it. And the girl got caught and shit, and, and it still feel like no justice. It's not, you know what I mean? It's just fucked up though with it. That was my trauma right there. For sure. Uh, being through that experience, uh, sorry for your loss. What's some uh, motivational advice you can give to the people that's, you feel me? Hey, what I learned from this, um, people, man, you really, you really got to use your mind. Your mind is a key. Your mind is a computer for real, for real. Your mind is the best computer out here. You really got to use it. Take control of your life and stuff. You know what I mean? Take control of your actions and stuff. Everything you're going through is not nobody's fault. It's your fault. you going through anything you're going through in life is your fault. And I'm learning that. You got to take responsibility of that. You got to control your emotions. Once you control your emotions, you control your mind. Once you control your mind, you control your reality. That's real talk. And you can manifest anything. We are powerful beings right here. So we got to control your mind. If you if you out there thinking about some, some hurting somebody else, some thug shit, some anger shit, depression shit, though, if you always sad, you know what I mean? You jealous. If, you, if you, you're a jealous person, man, jealousy is going to get you fucked up if you fear a scary ass person too that's gonna get you fucked up though for real vibrate high man start with love man vibrate you know what i mean peace love happiness like like focus on that and the money will come because you don't got no choice money is an energy you cut from trees right that, trees is to be alive it's all the energy and that's that's the secret of life and stuff though and if you if you anything that na name on a negative tip i know you poor for real i know you poor as fuck I know you're struggling, I know you're working, I know you got to pay bills and bills and bills. I just do that shit, though, when I was acting like you. But, you know what I mean? When I got, when I woke up, took the shackles off my brain, took the shades off my eyes, I see a whole different world. I'm in a whole different reality. I actually look out the window. I don't look at big asses and fat asses all day long no more. I can see the trees. I can see God work, the wind, everything. You know what I mean? And the motivation just stays strong. My brother lost his life. Because he was really living on the wrong path, to be honest and stuff. Though. He was selling drugs. He was up 100 bands, 200 bands, and he was letting everybody know. But when you do shit the wrong way, negative energy can't win. He got the cops out there, his own niggas, his own family, the bitches. He had too many negative shit working with him and shit, though. I was telling niggas, don't let people know. He lost his life. He had to pay his own life. So anybody out there, or you got your family members out there, tell them that's the wrong way to go. Got the, if you got the money, just go ahead. Get the fuck out the way. 
and, and live your life. Live it free. Live it happy. Yeah. For sure. What would you say first got you into the music life? Um, oh, man. Uh, okay. Um, shit, though. I was doing music when I was like two. I was going to church with my grandma, and um, for some reason, them drums used to drive me crazy. I, I like, I. I don't know, I was just looking at the dude playing the drums, I was just on it, and then I finally, it was a kid day, and I finally got a chance to play it, and I was really good, like it was shocking and shit on the drums, on the beat, I was really good hitting it, I just couldn't hit the pallet. But I was good on beat, and people used to come all over and just take pictures of me and stuff, so that drove me and stuff, that was driving me. And then when I turned like 13, you know, church, trying to be cool, church star, and not being, that thing for me and stuff, so I, I started really trying to learn how I guess how to be in the streets, and then um, I was in the streets so much worried about fucking bitches and shit though like that. I wasn't into music till my uncle died when I was like 20, 19, 20. He died and he left me a keyboard. I'm like, why you left me a keyboard? I play drum. I play the keyboard. And then my grandmother, she's telling me like. Son, you can do anything, you can play it. Then I start messing around with it, making beats. Then, you know, my cousin started coming around. Like, man, that shit raw. And then, you know, I start getting hooked. Like, oh, for real shit, let me do some more. I start getting hooked. And, and the talent was really crazy and shit, though. Like, like, yeah, that's the story, though. For sure. Uh, how would you typically, like, describe the type of music you produce? Uh, and um, make, create? Well, uh, I'm a uh, versatile producer for real though. Uh, I do everything though, for real, for real. I do rock, pop, I do every genre. I could just hear that shit though. Like, like I could just hear it and shit though. Um, I produce every type of person, country shit though, gospel. Uh, you know what I mean? Of course, you know, the trap and stuff though. Uh, what I get paid off is pop music and stuff, though. You know, pop music where I, where I receive income off, though. You know what I mean? That's a nice land to get in for producers and stuff, though. But I do everything. Um, I really study. I, I study that shit hard. I ain't go to school for it, but I went to my own school. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, I'm very professional with it. High quality and stuff, though. And I sell to... I do commercials. Uh, I got a commercial with Jay Honda right now out there. Y'all probably heard my beats. I got a commercial, a beat on uh, Wendy's. I know y'all heard that on the uh, 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 commercial. Uh, I just been blessed to to, to get in them connects and shit though. And I don't do shit. I'm telling y'all, I don't do shit. I meditate. I connect with the universe, and they take care of it. And I sit back and just get the benefits. You know what I mean? And we all can do that though, for real though. Motivation. For <laughs> sure. What would you say your most useless talent is? Something you can do, but you don't really do it for real. Uh, damn, I do a lot of shit, bro. Um, fixing shit, though. Like, like I can fix washing machine, dryers and shit, though. Uh, damn, bro, I do a lot of shit. I've been around a long time. Uh, I can do a lot of shit, though. I just don't put the time in. I don't just do it, though. For real, for real. Nah, I could do the electric, uh, yeah. put up shit though. I just don't do that shit though. For sure. Uh, what you would say the best advice given to you was from somebody else? Uh, when I was younger, what drove me was my grandma. She installed in me uh, that I was great. She told me I was great. She had me at a, a, a young age believing I could do anything, even drive at five, you know what I mean? She just, like, like instead of coming up like most kids, parents like, oh, what you doing that for? Why you fucking their whole thoughts up and shit, though. She really kept me in a, a, a dreamy belief state that we really need to be in, like a, a really positive state of mind and stuff, though. Um, and she told me I was great. So... While I'm in school, we all nappy head and shit though. Like, like you know, all the other kids got Jordans on and shit though. I couldn't afford that. We couldn't afford that. And she, my grandma and believe she's like, pay a hundred dollars for Jordan, boy. You go to pay less and you get these. Shit. I'm like, mom, they laughing at me. Mom, I'm sliding when I play basketball. You know, <laughs> we got buddies on and shit. Like, you know, but um, uh, like, like, but 
I'm out there and nobody's running fast job because I was just thinking like, I'm, I'm believing I'm great. That's in my head and shit. I was just believing I was great. So she just said that shit. She, she started that in me at a young age. And that got me going. Uh, right now at my age, I'm 40. I was born in 1980. And uh, you know what I mean? And shit though, like I'm in great shape. I, I be out there with my nephews hooping, getting buckets, you know? Um, uh, I'm changing a lot of people's lives. I got a lot of young in Atlanta, Cali, shout out. Uh, um, and they like 19, 18, 20, and, and they really successful young men and stuff, business mind young men. And I'm, I'm happy to be in their life to help them really get on that track too, though. You know what I mean? Shout out to all them young and stuff. It's over 100, and I'm just glad the guy that I could really do that. You know what I mean? Uh, my Instagram, going J. Carter Productions, you know. Uh, it's going and shit though, my music, my storyline on there and shit though, and I'm growing. Um, you know, shout out to G, he got the camera, shout out to Chills and shit though. You know what I mean, nephew, growing a beautiful soul, you know. Sure. So, uh, what's next for you? What can the people expect in the near future? Um, I got an artist, uh, her name Nisha. Uh, she from Cleveland, Ohio, our city. You know, um, she coming out. We got um, a nice little label out in Cali looking at her and um, talking about spending some big bucks on her and I produce every song for her. So that that's coming soon. I, 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 it's so much. I got my hands in a lot of things. Uh, we got this movie coming with Uncle Red Productions. Uh, um, it's like he got like episodes and he just got signed with um, um, Gerald Levert people and stuff though. I got a song with Key Sweat, Gerald Levert that's dropping. That's with Blackie. Shout out to Blackie. Um, uh, my, I, I got my stuff dropping for my brother. Um, that's coming though. But I put that on the hold so I can get all everything else out the way. But that's that's dropping. Uh, I, and I feel good to have fans over on uh, seas that fucking with my music and shit though. And I'm showing. I want to show people that life is not over. I want to show the youngins like when you get older, you still got that go. You still have that drive to to really do whatever. And I want to show the people that I've been in school with at my age, all fat, beer belly, all grayed up and shit. Yeah, y'all niggas, niggas still hope and shit, though. You just got to dig inside. You got to reach within, though, to get that shit, though. I ain't talking down. I just want to put the motivation because I, I know I got haters out there. Niggas can't stand me and shit, though, because I roll like a god, though. But it is what it is, shit. That's me, Jay Carter. All right, so uh, where can the people, the fans, the supporters, where can everybody find you? Hey, you can hit my Instagram up, j.carter.production, j.carter.production, you know what I mean? If you need them beats, holla at me, y'all create music, um, I do YouTube beats, we make YouTube beats and stuff, whatever you want, whatever you need, I create it, and I'll probably hook you up on a good little price, though, for real, for real, for sure.